In this next video, we're going to go through a lot of code. This is going to be mainly concerned about connecting a computer to the Arduino and sending and receiving data from uh, to and from the Arduino. In the next episode, we'll go into looking at how to actually parse the data from the Arduino and visualize it. And um, yeah, so. This is going to be a lot of code. If you're not really into coding, then this is maybe not a video for you. If you are into coding, I hope you're entertained. All right, here we are in Qt Creator. I'm going to use Qt Creator to uh, program a C++ computer program uh, to handle the computer to Arduino communications. And I'm also going to add some GUI widgets just to visualize a little bit of what's going on and um, yeah so let's get started let's make a new project let's make a QT widget application and let's call it wheel handler next QMake yeah window yes uh, and I don't want to do any languages yet we're gonna make it for desktop version control we're not gonna add that yet all right so here we are in um, my first new project wheel handler and it's empty project if i start it it should open just an empty window you see it builds and there you see here's the empty window that we just created um, in order to communicate over serial communications, we need to add this serial uh, library um, here to the project file. So we open the project file here and we add a serial port like that. And let's see if it builds. Uh, it seems to build. If it doesn't build a new machine, uh, you might have to install the serial port. We're going to add a new. So we're going to add a C++ class. We'll call it Serial Handler. Uh, handler. And we're going to base it on Qthread. And... We'll add Q object to it. Uh, there we go. Finish. Now we have our new C++ class called Serial Handler. Um, it the header file looks like this, and the CPP file looks like this. So quite empty. The serial handler is going to be working in its own thread, which is also why we are inheriting from Q thread. So this means that we will have to add some includes here. Um, let's see, include. We will definitely need QMutex in order to handle the memory that is shared between the threads in our program and QByte array. Okay, so we're gonna byte array. We should have a function that's where we can start the serial communication um, with our device. And so let's just call that uh, start serial. And um, it's not gonna return anything, so just void. Start serial, we're gonna give it a port as an input. And just do that as a reference. So we also need to um, do some message passing between some objects. The serial handler is probably going to be able to uh, need to communicate some of its data with other objects. We'll do that with signal and slots. So let's add some signals. Let's call it wheel data. It's going to be a signal. Uh, oh, sorry, void wheel data. And it's gonna probably send, um, for now probably it's just gonna send a byte because we're the speed, we're, we're only uh, um, 
receiving a one byte with a speed value. So let's just do the real data as a byte for now. Char uh, speed. And we might actually be able to do U and A T. So we have the same type here as we have as on the Arduino. We might also need some signals from the serial communication. Uh, so let's add an error signal. Um, it's just gonna provide a string with an error. Uh, and let's do a timeout, timeout signal. And let's also do a string here. And we want to create a similar function in the CPP file. And you press Alt Enter on the function. And there you go. Now it creates the, the function. We can take the port name here. So we should probably start uh, store that locally in the in the in the object. And let's just call it port. Then uh, let's just test if we're not already running. And uh, because we don't want to start a thread more than twice on the same object. And then we can do start here. So this basically starts this thread. Uh, on the queue thread and the queue thread needs a run function in order to uh, work so let's just remember to add that port queue string uh, and port there it is and let's we need to make um, private function here because we need to implement the actual uh, thread run function and that's pretty sure simple you just write run all right and that should be it and so now we have a run function this is the built-in run function from the queue thread so the start serial was my own function that I made public. This is a private function that is related to the queue thread. And so the start triggers the run. We definitely need a mutex. So let's just add that queue mutex. And mutex. I think that's probably it for now. So in order to start the serial uh, port, we do Q serial. Okay, port. We're gonna include it here in the CPP file. There you go. So now we have included Q serial port. I just press Alt Enter on the object, and it automatically fi figures out that it's the. We need to include the serial port. And let's just call it serial. Let's set the baud rate. Uh, set baud rate. What was it 115 to 100? I think that's what we did on the Arduino. Let's just check if that is the case. So here we have the Arduino program. And we set up the serial with 115 to 100 baud. That's great. That's what we need here as well. Um, oh, let's just add that with the semicolon. And um, yeah, now we just need to make a loop that runs until we quit the program uh, that reads and writes to the serial port. And uh, so let's make a while loop. And let's, let, let's make it run until quit is true. And so we need to add quit and quit to the object or to the class. Uh, let's just add that up here somewhere. Boo. And quit. And let's just default it to false. It will be a thing, but let's just for sure have it default to false. And 
that open QIO devs read right we both want to read and write to the uh, Arduino this is going to return true if it's successful so this is test if it is successful if this is true then it's just a uh, Right that serial port opened like that. Uh, there you go. Else Q info serial port opened. There you go. And let's just return if that happens. That means our thread will automatically just quit if the serial port doesn't open. So let's do if serial dot wait for ready read. Let's just give it two milliseconds. One byte doesn't take too long to transfer. And we also want to send some stuff now and then. In fact, let's just wait one millisecond. That's that's good. And um, um, let's read some data from the serial port. Serial dot read all. Oh. All right. So the thing with the serial port is we don't know in the millisecond that has happened, the Arduino might have sent two packets of data or maybe even more. And we want this serial communication later to be able to handle more than one kind of uh, data. So right now we're just sending one byte with a speed value. But in the future, we might want to send more stuff uh, from the Arduino to the computer. And so we need to take that into account. So this, the we're getting a byte array, so we might be getting more than one byte here. And we have to make a little bit of a protocol in order to uh, handle the bytes that is coming from the Arduino. There might also be, like if we experiment a little bit with the speed of the serial port, there might also be some lost packets and that kind of stuff. So we need to be able to handle if we lose any any packets or if anything like that ha happens, we, we, we have to handle that. We don't want, really want that kind of stuff to intervene with this thread that is running the serial port. The serial port is going to run in its own thread. In the main thread of the program, that's, that's where we're going to handle uh, parsing the actual information. So here we're just going to take the read data and we're going to put it, put it in a queue. So we, we should probably have another uh, object function here, uh, object variable here, queue binary, and let's call it read data. So this is going to, we're going to collect all the data we get from the serial port in this object. And this object is actually what is going to be shared between the threads. So this is whenever we access M read data uh, from either of the threads, we need to use the mutex because we don't want one thread to be reading or writing to this variable without, uh, without um, with, uh, with having the other thread also doing it. So uh, here we are going to say mutex uh, lock, and then we're going to say m read data. We're going to add our read data here into it. There you go. And then we're going to unlock it. M mutex unlock. There you go. So now. We're blocking anything else that uses the mutex from mutex from um, accessing the read data, and so any 
Anytime we access the read data, we just gotta lock lock it up. Let's also do uh, something that can handle actual sending uh, data. And um, we, we're probably gonna make another variable called write data here. Q write array m write data. And this is also gonna be a shared variable in this object. It's um, a mutex lock. I'm going to make a variable outside of the loop, I think. Here. And I'm going to call it Q binary read. No, sorry, write data. So this is a local variable and we're going to set write data equal to m write data and because we've now emptied we've now put the data from m write data into write data we want to clear m write data and unlock the mutex Oops, I don't know why I did that. Mutex unlock. There we go. And now we can test if um, there's actual data there. Uh, so let's so if write data length is larger than zero. Then we're going to write to our serial port. Serial, write, uh, write data. There we go. Um, and let's just wait for the uh, for it to work. If serial wait for bytes written. Write data. Clear. And uh, and if it doesn't, let's uh, let's not wait minus one. Let's wait wait one millisecond. That's a long time. Um, if it doesn't finish writing in one millisecond, then let's emit a timeout. Emit timeout. Um. Serial write response timeout. There you go. So now we've handled if the serial port maybe it disconnected, maybe something happened. Um, we have to at least do something with that. And um, I think this should work. Um, boom, 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 boom. Writing data here, clearing it, it doesn't really make a difference because we're reading, we're overwriting the write data up here anyway. As opposed to what we could do is we could put this in the end. Let's just do it like this. And if we actually meet a lot of these, then maybe we need to do something about that and get the buffer restarted or something. Yeah. All right. Um, let's uh, let's in the main window program. Let's make a serial handler object here. Um, uh, let's just make it up here. Serial handler handler. Uh, Include that. That there we go. And um, let's just make that down here when we in our constructor serial handler equals new serial handler. And the um, name of the 
I'm running this on Linux and on Linux and Mac. The device is going to be called slash do slash TTY ACM zero on Windows. It's going to be called something else. So you got to look up what the name of it is on the platform you're working on. Um, TTY ACM zero. If you have more than one, it's going to be ACM one, ACM two, ACM three and so on. And uh, let's just start it. Start serial. Oh, that should have been ah. <laughs> that should have been down here. There we go. And um, yeah, let's just send this in as parent. But that's what it received, right? Let's just see. Dun, 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 dun. No, actually, it doesn't take a parent. Fair enough. Let's not give it a parent then. There you go. Let's see if it runs. Um, oh, we need QDebug for QInfo to work. Let's just add that. Can we add that? Just add that over here. Include Q debug. There we go. And let's try and build it. It builds, but that doesn't necessarily mean it works. Um, let me just reattach the Arduino here. Arduino attached. And it seems to be actually sending stuff, I think. And uh, let's try and run it and see what happens. If it crashes. It didn't crash. It says, uh, can only be used with threads, started queue threads. Yes, I did that. But it's not an error, so I guess it might work. Serial port not opened. No, it didn't open. That's not good. So we made a bug somewhere. It got in there in the run function because otherwise it wouldn't write serial port not opened. Uh, can I do this? Did I write the port wrong? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, I forgot to set the port name, didn't I? Yes, I did. That's stupid. Serial set port name and the port. <laughs> All right, that might just be it. Let's see if this works. Serial port opened. Yay, it worked. Awesome. And um, let's just uh, see if we can actually write the data out that we get from the Arduino now. And um, let's do that in the main window. Um, so here on the serial handler, we now have a... Uh, oh, we are not actually... We're just kind of adding the data continuously to this uh, read data buffer right here. But we're never actually doing anything with it. And that's because we want to do that with a different thread. If we start a timer up here in the constructor of the serial handler, that timer will be created on the main thread. And um, uh, we should be able to do that because we have Q object here, but we might actually need a parent from a main window in order to do it. So I think we might need that to add that here to the constructor. Um, let's just Q object. Uh, well, why doesn't it want to auto complete that? That's kind of weird. Parent. And um, yeah, let's go 
go in here, add that here as well, and then I'm just going to add that here to the constructor of the Q thread. Q thread image like that. And um, yeah, I think if we make a timer now, it should work. <clears throat> um, so let's make a timer here. Let's call it um, Q timer and breed timer. And we add that there. All right, so now we have an actual timer. Let's um, let's actually start it. Um, M read timer start, and let's give it um, two milliseconds. Um, just winging it a little bit there. Um, and we also need to connect the actual function of the timer. Whenever the timer clicks or ticks, uh, we need to actually handle uh, the read data. We need a slot for that. So let's go up here. Let's make a private slots void on read data timer timeout um, like that let's actually make a function for it here and then now what we can do up here is we can connect it so we can connect uh, m read timer it takes a pointer so we have to um, reference it there and that should work. Then we say signal timeout. This we're gonna receive it on this object, and it's gonna be a slot on read data timeout. That's the one we just made. There you go. So now the timer should run and it should connect with this function down here. And this is gonna be in the main thread of the program. And Whatever's done in, running down here in the run function, that is going to be in our new thread. So whatever we do here, uh, we need to use the mutex in order to access our data. Uh, dot lock. And then <coughs> there might be a list of bytes in our um, in our read data, and. Um, and we want to handle them one by one. So let's just, let's make a for loop that pours through the data. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Or int i equals zero, i less than m read data dot length i plus plus. And um, it's complaining. Why is it? Oh, I put a comma there. There you go. Um, and then we'll get a byte. Uh, you and for now, that's just what we're going to use. You and eight. We can change this later. Speed data equal to m read data. I and then we can emit that emit um speed data did we call it yeah no we didn't we called it something wheel data wheel data um emit wheel data and we got some of the speed data here All right so now we have an actual um, we actually uh, 
processing our data. Let's just clear our read data after this and then unlock the mutex. Unlock. There you go. Uh, so now this should be able, this will just read one byte at a time and then set a signal with one byte uh, to whoever wants to read it. And um, let's just read it here in the main window. And uh, so let's just connect it here. Uh, main window. Do, 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 do. Where is... Uh, didn't we... Wait a moment. So, oh, here it is, serial handler. So here we're going to say connect uh, serial handler signal um, wheel data, was it? Wheel. Oh, single signal. Come on. Wheel data. And we can connect to this slot. And we don't have a slot yet on main window that can receive this. Just, just make that private slot uh, on wheel data. It's going to take a U and a T speed. U and a T, that looks right. Yep. And let's just add the function to the CPP there. And now it should have it here on wheel data there you go there you go and let's just write it out to the console q info wheel speed speed and uh, yeah I think we might need to add QDebug up here as well. QDebug. There you go. And then let's see what happens. That's a lot of problems here. Um, C++ repeats the creation on wheel data in with no type. Ah, oh, I forgot to give it a type. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait on oh, wheel data. There you go. Oh. That's that's not good. And now it says no matching function serial handler. Oh, it takes a parent now. And there it is. It's actually running. It says the serial port is opened, but it doesn't seem to be receiving any data. So that's not good. Um, kind of expected it to work. So let's just see if this timer is running correctly. Your info. Let's just put the name down in here. See if that runs. Yeah, it is getting there. Um, but apparently, read data. Let's just uh, let's just add. Wait a moment. Let's just add more to this thing. Let's make it into an integer and then let's just. Oh, it is an integer already, isn't it? So let's just do that. See if the length effort changes. It doesn't. It's always zero. Interesting. I, I can see the Arduino is actually sending some data and we also had it tested yesterday. It was sending data. I don't think our problem is on the Arduino side. Um, so um, it must be here on the computer side. 
Um, so we've tested the read data timeout. That works. There's no reason to test that anymore. Uh, it's got to be up here in the reading cycle that something's going wrong. And then um, let's just uh, try and put in a debug info here. Q info. And let's just send read data in there. See what happens. Let's try and run this. 0 port opened and nothing. Okay, it seems like it never gets in here. Uh, okay, let's just test that out here. Uh, serial loop. Let's just see if we get that. We should get that. At least we have the serial port opened plotting there, but we don't. Oh, while M quit, but quit is false. It should be going as long as it's false. That's why. So, while not quit, of course. All right, let's see if this works. Um, run. All right, we're getting it. We're getting data now. Wheel speed zero. Awesome. So that's nice. Um, good, good. I haven't attached the motor yet. Um, I need to. Uh, last time I used Arduino, I set the speed to zero. And um, just because I didn't want the motor running all the time. So let's just change that and see if we can read some actual speed data from the uh, thingy here. All right, so here we set the speed. Let's set it to 100 so we at least get a little bit of speed here. Boink. Let's run this. All right, you can hear the speed is more running as well. Uh, let's read the, see if we can read some data from it here. Yeah. So we're actually getting some data now. You can see an occasional one passing, by, zooming by. All right, this was all for today. We have managed to make a threaded serial handler in Qt that can actually receive data from the Arduino. And that's it. But that's enough for today because we've already reached half an hour of coding. And um, next time we'll be focusing on parsing the data from the Arduino, visualizing it, making a uh, regulator so we can regulate the motor. And um, yeah, so I hope you were entertained. Bye-bye.